Yes, good afternoon. I, I thought I deserved a, a round of applause. <laughs> Sorry, I am a very humble soul, but for what is going on, and when he says the regulator, and I thought at least I should be, uh, somebody should get in and say, this person is good, so that I have some comfort. Uh, I have just a very short presentation. I've been limited by time, but we are, of course, as usual, always happy to share with you with what, as Coffee uh, Development Authority, Uganda Coffee Development Authority, what is uh, what we are providing to the coffee sector. But what I have done and my team is to restrict ourselves to mainly the very uh, addition uh, in which we are looking at two varieties of coffee in Uganda. We are blessed to be the, uh, the birthplace of Robusta coffee, but also we produce Arabica coffee, which is very unique even among us, our neighbors. Globally, we contribute 1% to the Arabica coffee and 6% of the uh, Robusta. But also we produce uh, some of the cert certified or sustainable coffees. That's why you do the fair trade certification, organic and the others, where Uganda contributes 5%. Uh, I must concede the Rio Valley addition uh, is still very low. And currently we have only 48 registered coffee roasters. Uh, and apparently, Government started way back in 1994 to establish a soluble coffee plant. We haven't been successful. But we hope what you are hearing in the media, whether through uh, that direction or otherwise, we really need to have the soluble coffee plant. And that comes uh, at the forefront during the uh, 19, uh, precisely April uh, 2017, stakeholders sat together to discuss about the coffee roadmap. Uh, accelerating our coffee production, but very importantly, we are looking at how we can increase earnings for the common person, the farmer. And the first thing, as you saw, on, uh, as you see on your left, are the pillars. Uh, the stakeholders were very cognizant that we need to have very addition, uh, but also to have the demand. Uh, to increase the production, we have to know where the where we are, uh, how we are getting our coffee in the sink. And the first, very important, is that we have to have the demand for the coffee. Value added, and we are looking at some of the markets. Uh, China is a big population with 1.4 uh, billion uh, people, but also our, our other emerging markets. And for some of you who have attended the Dubai Expo, it's one, actually one of those areas we are looking at. The Middle East, the Maghreb, uh, of course, now the Eastern Europe, Sorry for what is going on, but we are looking at how we can target Moscow, uh, look at, at the Balkan uh, states, but also blending Ugandan coffee. Most of our coffee is being exported and mixed with other coffees. We have very high quality coffee. It's being used to blend our other coffees. Can we do actually the export as an origin? Can we be recognized as uh, an origin of Uganda coffee rather than our coffee being used to uh, blend other coffees. But the third, very, very important, is to support local coffee uh, businesses for value addition, including soluble coffee plants. So it's one of the areas we are looking at. And NDP3 has also alluded to the same. As a government supporting private sector, we are expected to have two soluble coffee plants in the next five years. Uh, UCDA working with Uganda Development Corporation are uh, working on the feasibility study. I know there has many, many feasibility studies that we have done, but we need to do much more to bring to the fore uh, of the, uh, because as I will explain, it's a heavy investment that you need to uh, partner with the government, but uh, government also opening up uh, some um, uh, marketing, promotion, and that's where the last part, a neighboring environment becomes in very, very handy. Some, we have some tariff barriers and non-tariff barriers which can be tackled 
also through the bilateral discussion. But what are the initiatives in the very addition we are looking at? Uh, there are so many initiatives we are looking at, but we are looking at also where uh, only 5% of our coffee is actually um, sold as a roast and ground coffee, or at least processed in that form. 95% is still green coffee. I cannot promise you here, and I don't think there is any government which will tell you as a coffee producer that you export all your coffee as value added. It's not possible. But can we consume much of the coffee uh, in your country? Ethiopia, talking to them, they can actually consume all their coffee because it's part of their culture. But the government actually deliberately forces in the courts the exporters to sell their coffee the high quality coffee because they need the forex in their country. If we can do it in Uganda, I think we would be very proud because you are investing in your country, the money remains in the economy. Uh, I have looked at also our neighbors where they are doing weight processing, but they are also Arabica coffee. Most of the countries also in Latin America are doing the same. So if we can push all our Arabica coffees weight processed, I think would be, we are still doing the drugas, especially in the Western region, the nachos. Uh, it's also a premium. Uh, Kenya, our ne Eastern neighbor, doing also a lot of uh, weight processing. And I think as Uganda, we need to move in that direction, including the Robusta coffees. Uh, as UCDA, we have recently actually procured some weight processing equipment where we'll be focusing especially Eastern and Western. And I know in this room there are some of the beneficiaries which have been benefited from the same. But also thanks to the EU uh, who has also supported the coffee sector through UCDA. And I want to announce at this moment that uh, EU has been a very, very generous partner. Uh, for the first time uh, since 19, if I recall well, 1998, that's when the European Economic Commission at that time came uh, in supporting coffee rehabilitation. But now they've come at the right time uh, and they, are, they have now also uh, approved another uh, grant of 8 million euros to support coffee and cocoa. In this time, in production, but also uh, the markup, the market access program that has been going on, they have prom promised another extension and they hope this additional support will bring in more private sector in this space. So very addition is the way to go uh, for both domestic and, and the uh, international markets. But actually very addition is not just the beans. Very addition starts from the, uh, the varieties, from the research, the high quality products you pr produce. And for many of you, uh, you are aware of the, uh, if I look at Honore de Robusta, that we have 10 new varieties which have been bred for both uh, disease resistance to uh, coffee with it, but also to the, uh, bean, the big screen size what is the, the famous screen 18. So the big proportion of their beans should be looking at the screen 18. And that in itself is very good for the roaster, roasting industry. And this is where, as a government, we invest much more. But also we are looking at the good agronomic practices. It's not enough to have the green beans and then you don't uh, produce the maximum. So we are emphasizing the good agronomic practices. Uh, as UCDA, we are working with the private sector, with also the district local government, to continue supporting the farmers to realize the big potential of the screen 18. The director of NACORI may not be in this room, but we have been discussing, and the next two years we have also a release of uh, new varieties of Arabica coffee. And therefore, the focus again will be uh, increasing, increasingly the big bean sizes, which are good for the uh, roasting industry. Post-harvest handling is where, uh, as, you, as a government, we have not performed very, very well. We still have a lot of coffee dried on the ground, 
we have a new law uh, which we need to enforce to, but also a lot of support to the private sector, the farmers, to embrace uh, post-harvest handling. And I want to emphasize, the more we drink our coffee, the more we realize that actually we need to handle our coffee very well. It's not just having coffee and you export. Uh, if you enjoy a cup of coffee and you know a, a bad coffee comes from that process, then you reduce the, the, those mal practices. So wet processing I alluded to, it's a heavy investment. Many of the locals are not able to invest in that and that's where government and also uh, through UDB, through UDC, but also other development partners, we can have some of these. Uh, a few of the beneficiary uh, uh, organizations have under the EU markup funding are going to be installing uh, this uh, weight processing equipment. Then we go to the roasting, and that's where we have really not performed very, very well. Our younger men and women need to, uh, to enjoy a cup of coffee. Our domestic coffee consumption is still very low, but will not grow very high if we are only importing coffee. I put there the indicative figures of the costing, and you can see it's not cheap cheap money that any local can invest in. But why do we do those uh, investments? This is really the profitability we are looking at. And we put some indicative figures. If you are investing in roasting uh, 1,000 uh, kilograms of green beans, sorry for the typo, and you look at the Robusta and Arabica, you see how roasting uh, basically, uh, Arabica coffee is much thought after, and that's why you see the big, much of the roasting of Robusta coffee is usually blended with Arabica. Uh, roasting Robusta coffee, unless you are a strong Italian, a mochiga who can drink the, the cappuccino, the, uh, the espresso, most of the other drinkers go to uh, a mix of the two. Uh, just a snapshot of the soluble coffee, uh, which in the recent days has been, uh, we've looked at the, what would it take uh, if we were investing in the soluble coffee? Is it actually profitable? To many of the people in the industry, uh, we know the big screen size, including screen 18, is used for uh, the roasting industry. You need to have the uniform beans, the big bean size which we roast uniformly, but also, of course, quantitatively, you have uh, a lot of the, of the powder for the brewing. So what we have been uh, exporting by the last month was 76,000 bags of screen 18. And I must say the number of the graphs is actually rising very uh, steadily. We have a big proportion of screen 18 coming in, and I am hopeful in the next, uh, in the coming years, we'll be having a big proportion uh, going beyond the present uh, 22%. Uh, but the raw grade coffee still, of course, is available, and as Uganda, we exported 40,000 uh, bags of uh, undergrades. That, those are the screen 12, and the broken beans, the hand-picked broken beans, which are exported mainly to India uh, for Tata and the others uh, and other companies to do soluble coffee. We export a lot of that coffee to Vietnam. Both of these countries are coffee producers. They all produce Robusta coffee. But our coffee is of very high quality, high aroma and taste, and therefore they use our coffee to blend uh, their not so good coffee. But also we export the Robusta coffee, the undergrades in Latin America. Not uh, we have Equida, which is producing exclusively uh, Arabica coffee, but they need to blend their coffees. We have also seen from the costings, I've given a, a graph, sorry. I've given a graph which shows the which shows the different sustainability coffees and specialty coffees and the different uh, prices they attract. We have not uh, 
we note that most of the, of course, the certification schemes are very, very private. Uh, we have the robo organic robustas, washed robustas, the fair trade certification, and then the others are the commercial robustas. What we normally see is that the, the conventional robustas are used for the roasting industry, uh, while the, and they are traded as commercial coffees, while the others, uh, the upper ones, are usually the sustainable coffees. They have a mark above the normal commercial coffees. And we think whatever brings in the pocket the farmer is actually very addition. Any small thing you can add in, ultimately the farmer what he wants is money in the pocket. Whether it is, uh, the roster wants the, 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 the naturals or the wants to do it the natural way or the certification, what adds on to the farmer is the, what we consider as, uh, as very addition. Similarly to the Arabicas, I must uh, emphasize that our Ruanzori coffees, which has traditionally been the, uh, the traditional, the nachos, are actually competing very, very favorable with the Ethiopians and also the, uh, the Brazilians. Our coffee actually is very, very competitive. It's slightly cheaper, and that's why we are having a big, a big run for the, uh, the, the countries like uh, uh, Ethiopia, which where in the market, they have been very famous to be very good coffees. But as an organization, we are also pushing to have our coffee to be recognized at international level, so that Uganda's robusta can be classified as the grading system can be classified according to the Uganda. Because we are the origin of Uganda coffee, and we think classification according to Uganda as an origin will also give us another mark uh, to the farmer. Finally, as I conclude, and I'm, I know I have surpassed the allocated time, but I will try to be very brief that the coffee roadmap actually recognizes the importance of uh, variation. Uh, and in our strategy, uh, for the next five years, we are focusing mainly on the variation in line with the agro-industrialization program. One of the focus areas is also supporting the planting of the high reading varieties. If there are members of parliament here, please support the farmers. The budget for coffee seedlings has, uh, is not available, uh, whereas the parish model may provide more, but we need to do much more planting for the farmers. Uh, and I'm happy to know that there are many farm organizations represented here. Uh, this is one of the ways that we uh, allow us to do variation when we organize together. It may not be feasible as a farmer, unless you are a big farmer, to invest in variation. As a government, we have developed the profiling. Each agroecological zone, now we know the test profiles. And we'll be sharing with you the, uh, the, final, uh, the final profiles. This is what is going to make as a country to market and brand ourselves. And they say you are exporting Zombo coffee, you are exporting Okoro coffee, Kisoro coffee, Masaka coffee, and consistently this is the profile the roster is going to have. Soluble coffee manufacturing has uh, eroded us, but is very financially viable, and I hope uh, with government support, we can have for the last time, for the first time, uh, an investment in uh, cyber coffee, but also the, uh, the sustainable coffees, the fair trade are very, very much reflected. Uh, we have more uh, property margins when you invest in there, uh, and this gives us, would not come at a better time when Uganda is now a member of the African continental free trade area uh, where we can export our coffee, and I want to recognize the big efforts by the Inter-Africa Coffee Organization, headed by uh, Mr. Solomon Rutega, which on the 4th of last month, uh, they signed an agreement with the NMOU with the uh, African continental free trade area, and efforts are going along the way to register coffee as one of the priority commodities and the African Union. This will make uh, 
not just Uganda, but to make most of the coffee producers in Africa export their coffee within Africa, uh, as opposed to what we see countries in the Maghreb, Tunisia, Morocco, getting their coffee from uh, third parties, from Italy, France, when it is actually our Ugandan coffee. I want to thank you, and I, I intentionally wanted to start with our first picture there, where even our locals knew that you can add value by roasting and putting in banana fibers. I thank you.